Sister of the Order, welcome back to the Order, and today we are actually going to be reviewing a new type of weapon to our channel, and that will be this. This is the medieval style falchion from Windless Steelcraft. Uh, now, Windless Steelcraft, this is a group that actually makes the same weapon, such as my CX, which is really cool. Now, uh, a little bit more onto that later, uh, in which the blade length overall is around. Overall length is technically around 34 inches. Blade length, though, is 28 inches. It's made from high carbon steel alloy, uh, 165, I believe it was, carbon steel. And as well, the weight is around, uh, I want to say, 2 pounds and uh, probably 12 ounces, give or take. And in which the point of balance is as well as around the 4 inches and 11 inches. 16th. So that's right about there. So that is actually really cool. And in fact, this is almost like a sword, but it's not exactly like a sword. Uh, I'll get to that very soon. As well, its thickness is 4.4 millimeters, width is 43.7 millimeters, grip length is 3 7 eighths of an inch, and as well, the pommel is threaded. Now, this is a really cool sword, by far. Now, why is this a really cool sword? Because this type of sword is incredibly historically inspired by real history weapons. In fact, these are some falchions right here that actually are a good example. Now, this falchion that when this copied from, this model anyways, is actually of the late variety. Now, many of you might wonder, Templar, what's the late variety of falchion? Uh, the late variety of falchion swords are, well, not exactly like their early medieval cousins, like this one. This one has what you might call an extension in the sword blade, meaning the blade is more uh, forced outward, kind of like what we could see with a falcata. In fact, the falcatas are the ancient falchions of history, and of which have this forward design of uh, piece in there. That of which causes it a massive concussive blow, especially if you hit someone with plate armor. Now, just holding these two swords alone, they actually feel like they weigh the same. One uh, reason is because this one has longer in blade, this one is shorter in blade. So, yeah. However, that's my point. Now, in truth though, the truth of the matter, the falchion is still probably one of my favorite swords. Uh, I get to the term plural meaning of swords, because this is technically, uh, in the medieval world, this would not have been viewed as a sword. Now, uh, here are many of you already, Timbar, what do you mean this cannot be viewed as a sword? Well, uh, Matt Easton from uh, Scala Gladiatoria just recently made a video on uh, that particular subject, so I'll leave a link down below for you all, so yeah. yeah anyways. This sword, by far, is incredibly badass. I wish I really do like. I really do like, though, that the fact that they added some uh, Christian crosses for the guard, which make it feel more of a medieval sword. Uh, now, when it came into the mail, it was technically slightly uh, oil blemished, I guess is the correct term, because, man, the, the oil kind of did a number on the blade a little, so it's going to take me a while just to get it off to uh, fix this, so yeah. However, it also came with this scabbard, which actually is completely wood on the inside, well, uh, what they call flims wood, which if none of y'all know what flims wood mean, it's technically like, uh, well, not thick wood, it's mostly just made out of leather, uh, which the leather covers over the, well, form of flims wood, of which is, means it's just one sheet of wood, and the rest is just pretty much of leather holding it together. However, now that's just my point though. Now many of you uh, might not know this though, but the design of the blade is a lot different compared to a broadsword. Now, this is my uh, medieval style crusading broadsword or whatever you want to pronounce it as. Now, if we take a look at this and compare it to the falchion, uh, 
the blade length is almost exactly the same. Literally, it's like, I don't even know if I can get this in the frame. With these two, uh, in. Uh, yeah. Because as you can see, uh, the blades are almost exactly the same length. The widths are the same. But in truth, this would actually have been cheaper than this. Now, many of you might wonder, Templar, how? Well, uh, the reason is kind of obvious. In truth, during the medieval period, uh, swords like, say, the broadsword like this were expensive. And I mean extremely expensive. In fact, the reason why this would be known as a sword is because of the way it's manufactured. Even though this falchion is made the same way with a threaded pommel and such, it actually has a difference entirely. One, being the fuller. And two, being the cost and manufacturing of the quality of steel. This, as you can see, its fuller is on the back edge where it belongs. And in truth, this is a single-edged blade. Now, if none of y'all understand of how much that means to this, it means a lot. Because in truth, in historical style combat, the way the falchion was used was like this type of form. And in which it would have had a fuller in the back edge, or entirely, if it wasn't able to be given a fuller, what would then be done is that it would have an extension in the blade. However, that actually brings me to my next subject, actually, because, in truth, if none of you understand the evolutionary trait of the uh, falchion, the falchion actually originated from another type of known, non-yet-incredible, near-identical type weapon to a sword, and that would be the sax. Now, if none of y'all remember of my sax, here's the thing. Sax, they also made from the windlass variety. So, yeah. As you can see, this thing is near identical to the length. However, there's a huge difference entirely. In, well, they are, one is slightly longer, yes. However, the other variety is to the fact that the sword's design is a lot different. And that would be the, well, they're technically made of the same material of bog iron. However, the falchion evolved from the sax, and in fact the sax evolved into the falchion because of one thing, warfare. Especially during the Crusades. Now, uh, many of you might wonder, Templar, why would the Crusades cause the sax like this to turn into, well, a sword? Uh, that's actually a good question, actually. In truth, actually this is, can easily be seen in history books because uh, due to the fact that warfare during the First and Second Crusades, it evolved the sword. And in fact, during the First Crusade, uh, many Crusaders that came back from the Holy Land, actually, during the First Crusade, actually brought with them, uh, well, Eastern-style swords, of which had a curved variety. And of which, uh, during warfare, also during the time of the High Medieval Period, or as we call it, the Crusading Periods, Swords like this would have start to be seen. Now, uh, most of the time, though, the falchion would have still been seen as a sax or a knife, a big giant knife. In fact, the Germans have their version of a weapon near identical to this, known as the Mesa, and of which there's even a two-handed version known as the Gross Mesa, of which is really cool. Now. If any of y'all have ever seen uh, the Lord of the Rings, or I should say the Hobbit trilogy, for example, with Thor and Oakenshield's sword being Orcris, the Goblin Cleaver, which the that sword in that movie is copied from this type of sword, a falchion, which is really cool. What I do like is the curved design is perfect. And in fact, you could easily use it with one hand or two. And now, here's the thing though. These would have actually been used not by knights, but foot soldiers, man-at-arms. And in doing so, these were the perfect sword for mercenaries. And in fact, uh, it's actually stated that if a soldier could afford a sword, then the cheapest one they could probably mostly buy is this. So, yeah. Now, many of you might wonder, Templar, what's the difference between the knife and the sword? Well... It depends, as I state, like, say, on the area you live in, on the uh, place that you're from, uh, such as the manufacturer and such, because, in truth, it depends, like, say, if it's on a handle, the blade length, or something. Because, in truth, some cultures actually still called this a knife. 
not a sword because still it had the one single edge because literally I have a one single edge blade right here which is really cool though but I do like that still now why is it that this sword was so famously used by foot soldiers well the fact is foot soldiers loved these things because these were a chopping weapon mostly however you could still thrust with these now there are different versions of falchions out there that of which evolved into different designs and as well then there's a different class of falchion which is not known as a falchion it's known as a chopper which is not like a falchion like this in fact, falchions like this are, well, known as the falchion, while the other weapons are known as choppers or cleavers, like this. So, and then there is the messer, so that gives us a good example. And of which, it depends on the manufacturing detail on how they were made. However, the falchion was used from the high medieval period up until sometime during the colonial periods. And in fact, these swords were still being used by the, during the time of the colonial period that even military uh, enlisted officers actually did use a sword just like this. So it does imagine this, especially on the battlefield during the American Revolution, you would sometimes see uh, a sergeant, for example, carrying a sword like this, or near identical to this, except the guard had changed from the cross guard into a more, well, basket hilt design or something like that, for a more forward charge. And in fact, pirates actually used a falchion-like blade like this, which would have been inspiration later to the cutlass. However, uh, in truth, these would have actually been incredibly seen during the time of the Mediterranean warfare. And in fact, it's actually stated that naval officers loved using this against the Ottomans. Now, however, we don't know how the sword evolved because there is different designs and different statements on how the sword might have evolved to this design. In fact, this is, as I stated, a late model compared to the early models. So, why is it that this is a late model? Well, kind of obvious in how you can actually tell. The blade doesn't have that forward design of chopping blow that you actually see, say, on the Falcata or this model. And in doing so, it's more of like a straightened blade with a thrusting point. That's because this was actually of the late variety of history. In fact, this model came out during the time, uh, during the Hundred Years' War, and was later seen throughout the War of the Roses, and so on. And we could see why this sword was really cool, because, I mean, wouldn't you want to have something this badass? Now... All in all, this sword is historically inspired, which I do love. In fact, I can easily move the sword very figuratively, very effortlessly in the process. Now, uh, one thing I don't like is this the grip. It slightly makes my hand slip a little, so I'm probably going to have to wear a glove with that. However, as I stated, infantry would have actually w used a sword just like this, especially because it's a lot cheaper to buy. And in fact, it's actually even stated that mercenaries, foot soldiers, man-at-arms, uh, bowmen, or any type of warrior in history would have probably used this. In fact, bandits actually got their hands on these a lot more easily than they did regular swords. And in fact, it's actually been stated that uh, if I was, say, for example, a regular uh, civilian living in a town, for example, like... Let's say, for example, I'm a citizen of the region of uh, Yorkshire, or mm, let's uh, maybe I should go uh, like Nottingham or whatever. And in doing so, I'm say a regular foot soldier. Now, in England, it was actually illegal for you to own a sword like this during the High Medieval period. However, this I could easily afford and actually own if I was just a regular civilian. In fact, medieval knights could only afford and hold on to two two-edged type blades, while foot soldiers on the other hand had to deal with using one-bladed design weapons. So that actually gives us a good example on what they would have actually used. So yeah, in fact, single-bladed weapons, perfect for the foot soldiers. And in fact, if you think about it, Foot soldiers, they had to use something that which was 
they were normally common with, and that would have been using something that has a chopping design below, of which the falchion is perfect for. In fact, the falchion was known to actually, uh, if you were to actually wear, say, gambeson and mail, what can happen is, even if, like, say, for example, if I hack at somebody, the design of the blade was so vigorously hard that if I was to chop into someone's own arm, what would happen is the gambeson would actually still, uh, not cause the weapon to cut through, but what would happen is it would have actually broken the wrist and such, which is really devastating. And here's the thing though, the falchion is still one of my favorite weapons. In fact, I prefer using this sword rather than most swords. Now, many of you might wonder, Templar, would these swords be effective enough to kill with a single cut? Well, maybe, I don't know. It's complicated because these swords are not entirely meant for power. What they were actually meant for was meant for destruction on the human body. In other words, if this was lighter than a regular sword, so that means it was perfect for this killing spree. And here's the thing though, a Messers are slightly smaller than the Falchion, and in which are incredibly, the Falchion is slightly longer. Now, this sword is still perfect for both thrusting and cutting use. Now, I've always actually been a fan of the uh, movie and including the series of Highlander. Now, I love the first movie, the other movies, no. In fact, don't even watch them, they all, it, this ruins the whole franchise. But uh, the reason I'm bringing this up is because in the series and even in the movies, I do not see any one of our characters even use a falchion sword. Which I find this very hilarious, seeing as though these guys are walking around town wielding a katana, a great sword, uh, scimitars, battle axes, uh, pretty much anything that's a longsword variety. And yet, a falchion I do not see them using, which is kind of hilarious. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of really messed up if you ask me. No, uh, <laughs> I gotta be careful here. Uh, but the thing is, uh, if they ever do a reboot of the series, I would like to see some of our characters using a falchion for crying out loud, because that would be a lot more badass. And here's the thing though, I love the fact that I can easily just grab the sword like this and just grab the pommel also, especially if I want to do more controlled kills, like so especially using the Italian grip. And in fact, that's actually where this design actually comes from, especially from Italy. However, this design model would have later seen battles with France and including Great Britain, or England. So it would have pretty much come from first the Italians and the Spanish, then gone into France somehow, and then into the region of uh, England, and probably maybe in the Holy Roman Empire. So, yeah, we could see how these weapons were incredible by far. Now, in general, Windlass did a very great job on their blade. Now, here's the thing, though. I feel as though this thing could probably cleave in through a human skull if it's unprotected. However, as I stated, these type of weapons were so devastating that if one was hack at someone's uh, cranial lobe like so... Especially if they were wearing, say, um, uh, a helmet of some sort, or, uh, well, pretty much you see my point. This could probably just whack into him so enough, it could pretty much probably damage their skull. Now, in truth, as I stated, this type of sword was not meant to hit steel, like, say, plate armor, for, like, during the time of the late medieval period, but it was perfect enough to actually whack at the parts of the body that were actually exposed, such as infantry units, who which were fighting other infantry units. However, this blade was so devastating that it was just gruesome on the field of battle. And in truth, even by the time of the uh, Spanish conquistadors, many Spaniards actually would have carried something like this, which says something. And in which plate armor was still being used by the time gunpowder was around, so I just want to put that out there. Uh, but yeah, we can actually see why the sword was so devastating. It could probably just cleave into a human body. Now, here's the thing though. This was kind of a horrifying part, because the falchion, what it did is it brought 
uh, mayhem on the battlefield for your opponent. In fact, imagine this. Your opponent you're fighting against, he's wearing gamison, he's wearing mail, he's wearing plate. Uh, well, some sort of plate, like say a helmet and maybe a, a corp uh, brigandine or um, I'm going to say a, a cuirass or a breastplate. And in doing so, he sees you coming at him with this thing and he's so fearful of you because you're whacking at him so many times because it's a lot lighter than his sword. And in fact, the thing is, the falchion was also used primarily with a buckler shield. That's right, the buckler would have been used with this. And in fact, these type of design would have actually been stated that while carrying the sword on their belt, what would happen is they would actually carry a buckler with this, meaning it would just uh, sway with it. In other words, when you're walking, it would make a clanging sound against itself, and it would actually later come to the term title of swashbuckling, which later would be used for the pirate. So, yeah, we could see how cool that would be from this sword. But, yeah, I could see why this sword was still being used, even when medieval swords were being replaced by, uh, eh, Renaissance style. However, these swords were actually used in the Renaissance a lot more than uh, sabers, rapiers, or any of the idiotic gentleman swords that I really despise in in historical uh, neo uh, Napoleonic warfare era. Which I'm not a big fan of uh, Napoleonic warfare swords. Uh, for a major reason, because it kind of just ruins the uh, medieval look for me. So, yeah. Uh, but you get my point, though. Because, in truth, this sword was used for such a long time. In fact, it's actually stated that it might have even seen the era, early periods of World War I as a trench knife. Now, I hear many of you already Templar. Why the fuck would someone use a massive trench-like uh, knife like that? Uh, well... In truth, the blade would have been, the guard might have been uh, redecorated or uh, forward discerned guard for a more enlisted officer's use for forward assault. Now, that's just a weird theory that many people put out. But in truth, the falchion had many designs. It sometimes had a straight forward point. Sometimes it had a uh, expansion belly, as they called it, or pretty much it would look like this. And in which there were so many designs out there that even some historians even state that the cutlass might be another version of the falchion. Now I'm not certain if that's true or not because I don't want to probably go that far, but you got to admit the falchion does look like it has the same blade variety as that of a cutlass. But still, Windless, y'all did a great job on this. And in truth, I do plan on hopefully trying to do a uh, armor up sequence or how to dress up as a uh, like say maybe a 14th century style foot soldier or man at arms or maybe the 15th century and such with the sword because that will be really cool if you ask me but anyways guys hopefully you like this like and subscribe also if you want to know want to know more in the description uh, I will also leave links where you can actually buy one of these badass beauties because in truth who doesn't want to buy a falchion you got to admit they are incredibly badass weapons by far Anyways, guys, this has been Templar. Have a great day. Hope to see you all in the next one. And also, as I said, like and subscribe. And also check out that bell icon so that way you can actually stay tuned. And this will be notified of an next upcoming video. As well, also check out our Facebook so that way you can understand on more details on the type of gear and later videos we're going to actually be posting. Anyways, guys, this has been Templar. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.